Welcome back Morales to this new video in which I'm going to show you how you can get the historical token price and we're going to do this in just a few minutes using the Morales Web3 API. So for my example, I've added seven days into consideration, but you can easily expand this to months or years if you want to. And I've created this drop down menu with a list of tokens on the Ethereum mainnet. Now you can easily add and expand to this list with different tokens. You can also make this work on different blockchains and networks if you want so. And that's very easy to do. What's even cooler is if you add a connect button, have someone connect their wallet and fetch their tokens and add them to this list using the smart contract address. So for Ethereum, let's take this as an example. We can see the graph for the last seven days. It started at a bit lower, moved up a bit and then sideways and then it's going down again around $1,982. So if we go to CoinMarketCap and compare this with ETH right here, seven days, we can see the graph looks very similar and it's moving downwards around $1,980. So this endpoint is very quick and very easy to use to get the historical token prices. And if we want, we can change this. Let's take link as the next example. And in just a few seconds, we get the graph for the link token for the last seven days. And you can see how it has evolved. And let's take another one before I show you how to build this. Let's take Sheep, for example. And you can see once again, the graph updates and we can see the price for the last seven days of the Shiba Inu token. Now, I hope you want to learn how to build this. So stay tuned and I will show you how. Hey, I'm Joseph, your Web3 instructor from Sweden. I've been into crypto since 2017 and have been building in the space since 2021. In my free time, I enjoy playing paddle, going to the gym or hanging out with my dog. I always try to enjoy some good pancakes, but that's for another time. Now let's get back to the video. All right, welcome back. We're going to create a root folder called historical token price and not balances. So I'm going to link the GitHub repo in the description below. Check for historical token price. And within this root folder, we're going to have a backend and a frontend folder. The backend is going to be an express server. So we're going to need to install that along with other dependencies. So we're going to need to install Morales because we want to use the API. Obviously, we're going to need the express. We're also going to install .env in course. And then let's also add this start script right here. Now, in order for us to use the Morales API, we need to have a Morales API key. And in order for us to have this API key, we need to have an account. So let's go to Morales.io and then go to pricing. So you can compare the different plans that we have. And we have a generous free plan, which is the starter plan. But if you're serious about building within the Web3 space, the pro plan is the one to go with. And if you want to create a similar dApp to fetch the historical token prices for, let's say, more than seven days, let's say for months or years, then you are going to need more compute units and more daily and monthly requests. So then you should consider the business or the enterprise plan. And once you have created your account, make sure you log into that one and you're going to come to your admin dashboard from here go to web3 apis and you will find your api key right here you can copy it go back to visual studio code create this .env file and make sure you paste your api key in there then let's create index.js and we're gonna import all the dependencies so we have .env so we can access the api key from the .env file and we do it like this we're using the process.env keywords along with the variable name we chose in here and then we're storing it inside the index.js file. Our server is going to be on port 5001. So at the bottom of this file, we actually start listening to our server right after we use the morales.start function where we pass along our API key. And in order for us to get the data we need for this dApp, we're going to need to do two requests to the Morales API. And we're going to do this by having two different endpoints. So it's going to be these two endpoints right here the get date block and the get token price now let's start with the get date block and this will take one parameter from the front end client which will be the dates and that will be an array so so as you will see later on in our front end client we will get the last seven days from today and the previous six and we're gonna store that in an array and send that to the backend server 
which we're gonna use to loop through each and every day because for each and every day we're gonna need to do this uh, endpoint request right here so we're gonna get the get date to block for that specific date i hope that makes sense if you have any questions make sure you post them in the comment section below so what we will do is we're gonna have this block numbers array which will be an empty array and inside this for loop for each and every um, loop so each and every response we're getting back we're gonna push the block number inside this block numbers array so eventually we're gonna have seven different blocks within this block numbers array and then let's save this inside the response variable and return that to the front-end client and this will make much more sense once we go through the front-end client as well and the second endpoint is very similar actually uh, it takes the block numbers as a parameter from the front-end client and here we are creating an empty array the token prices and we're using this parameter uh, and its length to create a for loop the same way we did above and for each and every item inside this array we're gonna do a request using the get token price method by Morales and we're gonna pass along a few parameters we're gonna pass along the address which is also a parameter sent from the front-end client along with the block number for this specific item inside this for loop and when we get the response back, we're going to take the USD price and push that inside this token prices array, essentially giving us another array with seven items. So seven different USD prices. And we're going to save this inside a new variable response variable and send this back to the front end client along with status 200. All right, that's about it for the back end server. Let's close this one and go to the front end client, which is a Next.js application. And I have also installed Axios moment uh, react select right here and also read charts so axios for us to be able to do the request to our backend server moment because it makes it so easy for me to get the current date and the previous uh, seven days uh, react select which makes it easy for us to create beautiful and simple drop down menus and then read charts because we want to display the beautiful uh, charts with the the prices the historical prices all right so let me show you the index.js page so you can have a look at how clean this is so we're gonna render two components header and main let's go to the header component first which contains the logo and the title that leaves us with the main.js component which is where everything is happening so let's in import use effect and use state we're gonna import all the other dependencies we installed as well so axios select from react select moment and then we're gonna uh, import these right here for the, from the read charts and initially we're gonna create these four state variables so we're gonna have show result which is set to false we're gonna have result set to an empty array uh, we're gonna have latest block numbers set to an empty array and also the address value set to an empty string and if you've seen our videos before you're probably used to this by now Let's go on and create an array with the different drop down menu items, which will be our different tokens. So let's add the contract addresses as values and then uh, the token name as label. So you can see link, you can see ETH, you can see SHIB, which is the one we tried with. Then you have USDT, USDC and a few others. Okay, so what's the first thing we want to do? And that's to get the dates, the current date and the last six days. So in total, the last seven days, that's what we do when we render this page. So we're gonna do a for loop up to seven because that's the amount of days I want. And for each and every day, we're gonna use moment to get uh, the date and the format is gonna be in milliseconds. That's how I want it. And that's how I will send this as a parameter to the backend server. Then the next thing we want to do is to actually send it to the backend server. And that's what we do right here uh, when we render the page as well. So we're using Axios to do a request to the to our local host on port 5001 slash get date block. And we're sending the last seven days uh, array from here as a parameter. And once we get the response back, we're saving the block numbers inside this state variable right here, the latest block numbers. And we're going to use this in the other uh, request that we're going to do very very soon and this request is going to happen within the change handler function but how do we run this let me show you 
So we have this uh, drop down menu right here and on chain. So once we hit the drop down menu and choose a different token, we're gonna ru run this change handler. Um, we're gonna get the value right here and set it to this state variable. And then we're gonna do a backend request once again to the get token price and pass along two arguments, two parameters. So we're gonna pass along the value, which is, if you can see right here, this value right here. So in this variable, what we store is this whole thing, but we only want this value right here. And that's what we're getting down here. And we're also passing along the latest number. Let me actually remove this console log from before, so hit save. And once we get the response back from the backend server, we set result to the token prices. And we also set show result to true, which means when this is true, that's when we render the line chart. And we're using this uh, line chart from here that we imported from recharts because it makes it very easy for us to create these charts that we want the way we want to. We can even specify the width and the height right here. And then we have this data object that contains the different uh, dots, so to say, in our line chart, which is the ones you can see right here. So I've added the values. I have the name, which is um, the day, which you can see at the bottom. And we can see that the value which is on the chart is the price itself. And that's from the results array that we saved right here. And I'm doing this for each and every item we have. So we have for seven days, so I'm doing this seven times. And then we're drawing the graph itself. We have the X axis and the Y axis, and then what will determine the lines. So in our case, it's gonna be the price, which we declare right here. And that's it guys. I, ho I hope this makes sense and how you can use this to create this chart. And if we take another token, let's take Matic, for example, in just a few seconds, once we get the response back, we display this graph beautifully like so. I hope you enjoyed this quick little video, guys. If you did, make sure you smash the like button, leave a comment below the video, and I will see you in the next one.